part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And welcome to another Reg Eye and Rota podcast powered by MGM Northfield Park right here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Shout out to our outstanding producer, Chase Smith, making sure this all gets out to everybody in that podcastosphere. And Michael Reg Eye, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It's deja vu all over again. I feel like we've started a podcast like this before this year. I, I think we did, and the result was similar to this. Dolphins 39, Browns 17. Just when you think maybe, maybe, maybe after whooping the Bengals' asses a few weeks ago and having a bye to prepare for Tua Tunga Viola and the Dolphins, that the Browns are on the right track. Uh, they go and they lay an egg today, wet the bed, crap the pan, whatever you want to say. Uh, they just got their butts whooped today in Miami, and I, I don't know how to figure this team out, to be perfectly honest with you. Can't. Can't figure them out. Last time we got together, we were uh, extremely optimistic, looking at what – Maybe, even though it was the team they seem to always beat, Cincinnati. Yeah. Browns are probably in this offseason, they're going to find a way to schedule Cincinnati double digit times a year, Kenny, <laughs> so they maybe can beat somebody. But yeah, I just an atrocity of a of of a performance today, Ken. And um not only was the uh the bottom line uh, terrible especially on the defensive side of the football once again. I mean, oh, just a couple of yards shy of 500 team yards for the Miami Dolphins today. Yeah. Any, I, 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 I'll ask you, I don't think the effort and the want to was anywhere near what it should have been today. What say you? Michael, I, I looked at them and that opening drive, my hope – was uh, rewarded, right? After beating the the Bengals, they get the opening drive. They go right down the field, and I'm thinking, man, okay, nice drive, balanced, a uh, uh, good uh, deep ball, and, and they take a 7 nothing lead, and then the defense gives it right back as Tunga Viola led that team down the field, and you're right, running the ball, throwing. They did whatever they wanted against that Browns defense, and for me, it starts on the defensive line and the interior of that defensive line. And that was their weakness in the offseason. They ignored it for whatever damn reason. They didn't feel they needed to address it. And it's come back to bite them in the ass because right now, and Cincinnati's kicking themselves probably, looking back at that film, thinking, why the hell didn't we run the ball 30 times against that crappy defensive line? Because they can't stop anybody. It's a hot night going through butter running the ball against the Cleveland Browns. And once you do that, then you got to bring some of those so-called linebackers that are more like safeties, undersized, up to the line. And they're getting run over. Uh, they're getting dump trucked. And the secondary did a decent job on uh, uh, you know, Tyree Kill tonight uh, as well as uh, Waddle. But it didn't matter because they were running the ball at will. The effort was not there. The defensive line is awful. Uh, Joe Woods, again, I don't know how he keeps his job at the end of this year, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, Miles Garrett kind of threw him under the bus, right? Uh, something about, well, you, you can't run through uh, uh, the wall if you don't oh, – oh, what is it? You can't run through a wall if you're not all going in the same direction. In, in other words, well, what what's going on with the coaches? So, um, yeah, th this was an awful effort today defensively by this Cleveland Browns team, and I don't want to hear about how hot it was uh, in South Beach. That That's being brought up, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll just ignore that and, and move along because that's a bunch of uh, BS nonsense. Uh, look, uh, you just brought it up, Kenny. Y you cannot be small – in your interior defensive line, and with your linebacking core. You and I have talked about this before, yep. right? I'm talking about being physically small, not big enough. Andrew Barry, this is on you, man. This concept you have that you want to go fast and lean on your defensive line and with your 215 pound linebackers i'm sorry andrew i've been all about you nobody's been uh more positive and doling out that positivity 
right, to Andrew Barry, kudos than me the last couple of years. Yep. This now, those two positions, that's all him. And it's epic fails. He wants to go small, lean, and fast. Kenny, you cannot win that way defensively in the NFL. And I hope Mr. Barry is – this is something that uh, I hope he takes real seriously and earnestly in this offseason because you're not going to win that way. You better get bigger, Andrew, in your D-line and in your linebacking core. And you got to do it uh, in – in multiple areas, uh, those two areas, but with multiple players, because Kenny, it's uh, it's egreg- egregiously showing up very poor, very poor. That's why they're getting run on, run on uh, just so dramatically. Yeah, I'm looking at the rushing yards today for the Miami Dolphins, 33 times for a buck 95 and two touchdowns threat. So five yards shy of 200 yards. Why anybody wouldn't run the ball 30 times against the Browns is beyond me. There's your recipe for success. The Bills aren't the greatest running team in the world, and I don't know if Josh Allen will play next week or not as he got dinged up supposedly a little bit again today in that loss to the the Vikings, but uh, they've got to look at this and go, well, good. Maybe that to give Josh a little bit of a breather, maybe we, all we need to do is run the football against the Browns, and you know the Buccaneers will see that uh, as those are the next two opponents going up against the Cleveland Browns. So you're right, Andrew Barry, uh, he's the one who who did the shopping, right? Yep. Uh, he he went out and uh, had his his grocery list, and uh, this is what he had on that list, and that's what he bought, that's what he drafted, that's what he traded for, and it is not nearly enough uh, on the defensive line and the defense overall. The defensive line stinks. The linebackers are too small, and the secondary is just average at best, and that's one of the reasons you're three and six going into game number 10 next week. That's a pretty bad recipe, all those things that uh, that, yep. that we've just pointed out. So, you know, Kenny, I uh, again, we were uh, we were enthused and what have you last week and thought, you know what, I you know, they're not, they're, they're not gonna beat Buffalo, and I'm not sure then they're gonna beat Tom Brady when he comes in here either. And then you can uh, just put an end to. If that's the case, hell, even if they do, and but you know, this, this is supposed to be a playoff team, man. This is supposed to be a playoff team that uh, you know was going to was going to show those capabilities and show why that. Uh, and, and and how about how about maybe us too, Kenny? How about us? Did we did we buy all the Kool Aid and vastly vastly overrate this roster? I mean, I know we're all talented, all, all kinds of talent here. Are they really? Are they really that talented a football team? I mean, you can tell me all you want about um, you know again. Well, they don't have their quarterback. Well, listen. Um, again, the the biggest issues are on the other side of the ball, and we just laid it out there. So we, there it is. It's on the other side of the ball. Have you got to you get Kenny? You got to put up 30, 35, 40 points every week to try to win. And that's with the exception of just a couple of games. And again, yeah, they played real well against uh, Cincinnati defensively. Yeah, they did. Fine. All right. But what about consistency? What about being able to sustain it? What about uh, at least, you know, you just said it. Well, what, what are teams really, what, they got an extensively game plan against the Browns on their offensive side of the ball? You just said it. You know what you're going to do. You're going to be able, if you commit yourself to the run, you will wear the Browns down. You'll run the football for a buck 50 or more and take control of the football game. I mean, that's what I see. It's pretty much that simple. Standings in the AFC North, Michael, as we tape this uh, podcast, Baltimore in first place, six and three, Cincinnati, second place, a game back five and four, Cleveland and Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Saints today. Saints are really bad in order to lose to Pittsburgh. They must be uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh tied at three and six in the cellar of the AFC North. So everybody's played nine games. Uh, that means you got eight more to go Two with Jacoby Brissett as your quarterback and then supposedly six with Deshaun Watson as your quarterback. And it, like you said, uh, they lose one of the next two. It ain't going to matter uh, when you mm. bring Deshaun Watson back. And they lose 
two, you know, the next two for sure. Forget about it. Season's over uh, at three and eight, bringing him back. So, Michael, th this team needs to be seriously looked at under the microscope in the offseason. The question is, who does the looking? Is it still going to be Andrew Barry? Is it still going to be coached by Stefanski? Is Joe Woods going to be the D coordinator? Or does Jimmy Haslam come down and say, all right, no, I ain't putting up with this crap. Uh-uh. Uh, I've seen this story before, and okay, yeah, uh, I hate to do it because continuity is important and everything, but is he going to blow this thing up if they end up going 6-11 uh, and 11 or 7-10, and 10, something like that, with supposedly all this talent that you talked about earlier on this ride? It's, it could get ugly. Real, you thought this offseason was ugly, and it was. Don't get me wrong, and it was far more um, uh, important as far as why it was ugly off the field because of what Deshaun Watson uh, was the ledge of doing, right? So don't don't misinterpret this any anybody out there, okay? But on the field, yeah, they're really, really ugly, and they're going to have to make some major adjustments this offseason to get this thing turned around if they think they're going to challenge for – forget the AFC title, uh, the AFC North Championship, something they've never won since it's been in existence. Yeah, how about that? How about a, a damning statement is that, mm. that that this organization that, uh, you know, everybody feels is, you know, one of the, the pillars of longstanding excellence in yeah. the National Football League, right? Well, no, no. And, and don't think for a moment, piggybacking off what you just said, could, you know, continuity, Ken, sustainability, you know, right. trying, don't think for a moment Jimmy Haslam is going to if he does if, if, if he gets upset enough and just basically throwing his hands up in the air and saying this is not what I, hey he'll he'll make moves he'll fire the head coach right and then you have another head coach and a whole new staff and uh don't think that he's just going to just automatically again if this thing goes way off the rails, I'd almost be surprised if he didn't, Ken. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I mean, this is year three. And I, I mean, again, so if you're selling this, that you got a roster that is talent strong, that can win, and they wind up, I don't know, you know, seven and 10, six and 11. Well, you, yeah. ne you necessarily think he's going to sit there after that finale and say, well, yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll, 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 go. we'll bring this back. We'll make some tweaks. I'm not, I'm not at all. They either better, you know, they're going to have to, they're going to have to finish this up with some oomph, man. And I don't know if, you know, if he's going to hold it to making the playoffs at this point, but um, that, that's, you know, we brought that up. That, that's very far-fetched, Kenny. In fact, it's so far-fetched. I'm not even discussing anything to do with that right at the moment because, you know, you they got a very, very small chance to do that. And they, first of all, you got to start playing winning football. What have we seen other than that Bengals game that, that, that that's the case? Not much, right? We no, thought maybe we all. saw a little bit of that defense shining in Baltimore, keeping Lamar Jackson in check, and then they backed that up with a game against the, the Bengals with a victory on Monday night, and then they go out and have two weeks to prepare, and this is what you, you lay out there? Two weeks to prepare for a 39-17? to 17? Was that the final? I lost track. Was it 39-17? That's what, was what it was. Yeah, 39-17. That, that's what you, you laid out there after two weeks of preparation? Terrible look. Oh, Terrible look. Goodness. Look, you, said, you, you got a bye week. You got a bye week coming off a win. And what are, what are you all of a sudden fat cats now? Oh, yo, you got a win. Now we got a bye week. Now everything's just got rolling our way. No, no, nah, it, it just doesn't do that in the National Football League. They're not capable of sustaining, Ken. I mean, th that's really the only thing that we can come away with, uh, you know. We'll go back, and I still, you know, Bill Parcells, baby, you are what your yep. record says you are. You can, that's the teams that he coached that were having poor seasons. So what he was saying is you could try to sugarcoat it all you want. You could say, well, this, yeah, but we got this or this, and that's going well. No, no. 
They're a three and six football team with eight to play. And if you could tell me you've got now, nah, I grant you that uh, you may want to say that after this, uh, the next two weeks, if you want to say, but see, I, I'd be careful of that too. Well, the schedule will get easier. Baloney. It's the National Football League. Don't try to tell me that. Uh, yeah, tell me whoever you think are the bottom two and th- two or three teams in the league that uh, aren't the Cleveland Browns. And you think you're just going to go and roll on up there and manhandle them and beat them every time? He's, no, man. This team isn't capable of that, Ken. They're showing that to us every time they go out. And then they'll fool you once in a while, right? Like we're talking about, like they did against Cincinnati. Yeah, well, there's all kinds. Again, I, I don't know. As I look at it, I'm, I'm not really the, – to me, this talent thing on this football team, very overrated. And then you throw in Andrew Barry's just terrible misfire. Uh, what well, We discussed and you laid out, D-line and linebacking crew. You Ugh. can't win that way. No. You just can't. Michael, uh, Jacoby Brissett, uh, they're three and six with him. Is he the entire problem on off? No, he's not. But no, he is not. he is who we thought he was, exactly. right? A exactly. A backup quarterback, and that's who he is. There's a reason why Belichick didn't see him as the successor to Tom Brady and got rid of him, right? Yep. And so that that and, and that falls on Andrew Barry again, right? Because that's who they went out knowing that they were gonna have Deshaun Watson miss a, what they thought five, six games turned into 11. This is the quarterback they targeted. There were other guys out there, not great guys, okay, but there were other. Mitch Trubisky uh, was out there. You could have traded for Jimmy Garoppolo uh, possibly, right? Uh, They went out. They sought out. Uh, Jacoby Brissett brought him in here, and again, he's average at best. When you're ahead, it's fine. When you're playing from behind, he can't lead you back to a victory. Nope. And uh, he's three and six because that's who he is. And so I don't see him being on this football team next year. Uh, and uh, somebody will pick him up a- as a backup where he should be. But mm-hmm. um, 11 games, uh, he's not going to help you win a, no. a division, a wild card, a playoff spot in any way, shape, or form. And that's why I think originally, I think originally I had them at 11 and six, Michael. Yeah. Then I said, no, nah, let me go 10 and seven. Then when right. we found out how long it was, I think I said, I'll go nine and eight. Right. Uh, without Deshaun Watson, nine. If they did. go nine, nine and, eight. and eight, that that'll be a miracle at this point. At the, well, they they got to go six and two. Yeah, that, and that ain't happening in their last eight. They had to achieve nine and eight. Yeah. So you know it's um it, it's it's I want to say it's a shame, but then again, is it really? Because as we're pointing out, um, uh, yeah, there there's this is. This is flawed in a yep. lot of different areas. And now, you know, as we said, you don't know. You just don't know how the owners of this football team are going to see this if, uh, as Kenny and I are saying, if this winds up, um, you know, uh, in a 6 and 11 or 7 Ooh. and 10, where you, I, you know, I, hey, I'm telling. I, I, I would well. I will tell you. I think there's a greater chance that they make a move uh, if that's the case. Right. Right. I, I think uh, so too, Michael. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. They'll make a move with the uh, the head coach, and uh, well, I that don't know. Coach about of the uh, coach of the year award only buys you a little bit of time, and it's, that's right. This will be year three. And, and by the way, Stefanski in his last uh, thirteen games is four and nine. You want to take it further? In his last twenty two games, he's eight and fourteen. Okay, so uh, he, he, that that fall from grace happened rather quickly, and a lot of people are saying, "Well, he'll, he's he's going to get a buy this year because he didn't have Deshaun Watson." Well, he's had a chance to win some games, and, and his play calling, his decision making. Uh, again, I look up here tonight. Nick Chubb, best running back in the NFL, got eleven carries today, and, and this and that Michael, came that came most of them came in the second half. Late, and Michael, it was only. Uh, a 10-7 game at one point in the first half, and then late in the first half they scored. It was 17-7. So it's not like they had to throw the ball, that they were that far behind. And I, I, last week, 44 runs, 22 passes. They uh, win the game or two weeks ago against Cincinnati, and then they come out and they give them the ball 11 times for 63 yards and 33 of those yelling one big run, so he didn't have a great yards per carry no, average. He did not. But – 
That's what he can do if you give him the ball enough. He can eventually break one for you like that. And yeah. when you're struggling offensively, that's the guy you need to go to. So I, I just, this team's a mess right now. And uh, I don't know what the elixir is, and I don't think it's even Deshaun Watson. I don't think even he can fix this right now. No, probably not. And, and again, when I saw, I believe, uh, uh, looked in the third quarter, and it was early in the third, but Chubb was six carries for 17 yards. Yeah. Not even three yards a carry. Now, I'll tell you how that happens. How that happens is when you j- don't commit to what we all believe is the best part of your football team, your run game. But when you, and, and again, you're so right. I mean, no, nah, nah, man, when you're down a touchdown or 10, I'd say even 13, 14 with this team. Right. Still early, you know, when I'm talking about either late first half, early second half, you don't get away from your run game. That's what you do. I mean, you- that, that, that's who you're supposed to be. Yep. And you 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 get the offensive line saddled up and let's go. Let's if you would have told me, Michael, if you would have told me a team had 195 yards today and two touchdowns on the ground before the I game, know. I say, hey, Browns, the they, Browns, they did it again. That that's offensive right. line, they featured Chubb, they won the game. Well, that's what the Dolphins did today. A buck 95 on 33 carries and two touchdowns. And their longest run from scrimmage was 24 yards uh, running the football. And mm-hmm. so kudos to to the Miami Dolphins is they got it done 39-17 over the Browns. Michael, let's get a break in. When we come back, we'll look at the remaining games. When Deshaun Watson does come back and, uh, you know, what has to happen if this team is going to save this season, uh, resurrect this defense, and have a chance to make the playoffs somehow, some way. We'll do that here on the Press Play Podcast Network right after this. Looking for new insights on the Cleveland sports scene with a unique side of Cleveland sports history? Then you found the perfect podcast. I'm John Sable. And I'm Scott Sable, and we're hosts of the Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast, a podcast about Cleveland sports, but not your typical podcast about the land's sports teams. Join us as we embark on a journey of sharing a unique and historical side of Cleveland sports history with the help of some former Cleveland sports stars and other historical figures. All right here on the Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey, everybody, it's Sam Amico from Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Be sure to give us a listen for all your Cleveland Cavaliers recaps, analysis, breakdowns, draft talk, free agency. The list goes on and on. Give us a listen, Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. What's up, everyone? I'm Holly Wetzel. And I'm Tigers Powell. And we are your hosts of the Orange is Oranger, a Cleveland Browns podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. We give you all the dog pound coverage that you'll need to get you through the regular season, hopeful postseason, and I'd say off-season, Tyvis, but is there really ever an off-season for this team? Thankfully for our podcast, Holly, there really never is when it comes to the Cleveland Browns. Don't miss our breakdown of each week's matchup, game recaps, and any and all news out of Berea to feed your Browns appetite. As we know, Holly, dogs gotta eat. Yes, they do. So hit that subscribe button and never miss an episode of the Orange is Orange Cleveland Browns podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey, I'm Jason. And I'm Gary. And and we we love love ball ball cards. cards. And if you love ball cards too, good news. You just found your new favorite podcast. From breaks to grading. And from collecting to flipping, join us on the Ball Cards Show. The sports podcast for the sports collector. And we continue with the Red Guy and Rota podcast here on the Press Play Podcast Network, brought to you by MGM Northfield Park. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. Catch the excitement of live harness racing every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday evening with a 6 p.m. post time. Wager and win daily on top thoroughbred and harness tracks from around the world with action starting around noon. Plus, you can enter to play the free handicapping contest. That happens every Sunday and your chance to win a top prize of $500. Registration there begins at 11 a.m. Free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. All right, Michael, three and six. You are what your record says you are. That is the Browns' last place in the AFC North. Three plus six is nine minus 17. 
Eight games left, Michael. Two with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback, and then six with Deshaun Watson at quarterback. Let's go. I know it's ridiculous to do this, but let's go glass half full, Michael Regai. What has to happen in these remaining eight games for the Browns to get into the playoffs? I don't care how, division <laughs> winner or wild card. What, uh, what? After we just said you're going to do this to me? <laughs> yes. What has to happen for them to have this crazy chance? This, it, You know what? It'll be a mirror. It'll be like uh, my uh, the Mount Union Purple Raiders yesterday. They're calling it that? the Mount Union Miracle, beating my Baldwin yeah. Wallace Yellow Jackets for the 27th consecutive time on a Hail Mary at the gun at Trestle Field at George picked, Finney right? Stadium. Oh, no, it should have been knocked down. You, oh, you well, knock the down, damn no, ball yeah. down. Yeah. You don't go for the interception. You knock it down, you win the damn game. So the miracle happened for uh, Mount Union. As they want another OAC they needed title. One. I know, as right? Any team needs miracles. <laughs> right. Them. <laughs> well, the Browns do need a miracle. So what has to happen for that miracle to happen oh, for the Cleveland Browns? Uh-oh, you called me Kenneth. Uh-oh, Kenneth. here we go. <laughs> Get a, uh, how, about, how about come up with an entire new defensive room Ooh. of player personnel Okay. in the next seven days to start with? I, I'm pretty down on the defensive side of the ball, Kenny. Um, pretty down on him for all the reasons we just laid out. I, I just, I don't see it, my man, to answer you. I, what has to happen? I don't see it happening. I don't think they can play that kind of winning football. They just don't do it consistently, Ken. You know, and again, that tells me that, um, there are, there's issues with this with this roster, Kenny, I, there's issues on this roster. Okay. And again, I, I think you got to get that. Uh, it's going to take an off season to hopefully get that squared away, you know? <laughs> so I'm calling the college hoop game today. Right. Yep. And, uh, so son Cal, of course, who's a huge, you know, he lives and dies with the Browns, huge Browns fan. He's texting me and I'm saying now I so I find out, uh, okay, now I got to go watch this thing. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm taping, and now I got to get home and go watch this mess. Right. Cal says to me, Dad, don't worry. Here's all you need to know. You don't need to watch it. The O-line got pushed around all day. The defense plays with no energy or pride. Dolphins got whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted, running the football. And then I won't tell you what he said about, <laughs> <laughs> about, about a couple of players. The only positive thing he said to me is Donovan Peoples-Jones is promising. Uh, everything else was, uh, you know, what I just read to you. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I said, well, it, okay. Uh, you know, I know, you know enough about it. So, and then when I watched it, I said he pretty much correct on everything he said. Yep. Um, so, but I mean, yeah, it's, um, Kenny, I, 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 I don't think it's going to get fixed until, and it's no guarantee, but I think in this offseason, there has to be a lot of personnel changes, player roster, and most specifically defensively. And I, I don't know where I this whole thing about I, I've, this Joe Woods thing, I've heard ad nauseum now. It's been constant, right, over the course of uh, this season. Yep. You know, and, and again, now, if there's a head coaching change, most people feel like, oh, that's oh, that's not a possibility. I hey, listen, yeah, I would have said the same thing too, but we've we've already said it, so we'll go into it again. If this thing goes off the rails, right, and they finish poorly, you actually mean you you? So I wouldn't put it past that 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 man to make changes. It just is. How, how upset does he get? How much does he, or is he sold on that that's where the main problem is coming from, right? Yep. I, you know, um, so that's to be determined. Uh, then uh, again, if they if they do sustain some wins and, uh, you know, then I guess you don't have to worry about that, at least a coaching change. But nothing would surprise me, Kenny, if this thing, uh, if this thing keeps going south. Nothing. All right, Michael, I'm going to give you the glass half full 
uh, the Mount Union miracle version of how the Browns get in the playoffs. Okay. Okay. Here's what has to happen in order for the current three and six Cleveland Browns, all right, to get in the playoffs. Somehow, some way, it starts next week on the road at Buffalo. Maybe Josh Allen doesn't play. I don't know. Okay. So Josh and, Allen's and, and out. Not to interrupt you, but they lost today. I know. Two in a row, though, they've lost. So why not in three in a row? Why not okay. three in a row for the Buffalo Bills, right? Okay. Okay. Josh Allen yeah. or no Josh Allen. So the Browns go into Buffalo, shock the world, and beat the Bills. Then they come home, and, and Tom Brady uh, and, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come into town, and they're starting to play better, right? Yeah. They think they're just going to waltz in here, and they take the Browns for granted. And uh, uh, Cade York hits a 68-yard field goal at the gun, and they shocked the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to get the two that they desperately needed, right? So got to get those two to start things, Michael. Then after that, well, the, the Browns, when you look at the schedule, say, okay, well, it gets a little bit easier after that, right, for the, for the Brownies after those two tough games. So yeah, you look at the schedule and say, all right, after beating the Buffalo Bills and, and after beating Tom Brady, Okay, what what has to happen in that next game? Well, in that next game, uh, all they have to do is bring Deshaun Watson back, go to Houston, and whoop up on the crappy Texans. That's very possible. The Texans stink. So that's three wins in a row. Then the crucial part of the schedule, Cincinnati at Cincinnati, Baltimore at home. That is where, if we're, we're looking glass half full, I don't think it can really happen, but I'm trying to paint this picture yeah, of boy, how it possibly you could happen. Certainly are, my man. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. you certainly are, and that that's more than half full, buddy. You, yeah. You've done at least three quarters right up to the uh, the rim of the glass. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and that's and that, all I'll say. That glass was uh, some Cabo Wabo tequila, and I've been Something. drinking it trying to figure out a way for them to make the playoffs. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, you, you, you got to split with those two, Cincinnati and Baltimore. And then, Rich, cakewalk, baby. New Orleans, <laughs> Washington, and Pittsburgh. Decline. They go 7-1, and one, okay, in these remaining eight games, finish 10-7 and seven and sneak into the play. Oh, That's wow. what has to happen in order wow. for the Cleveland Browns to make the playoffs. And if I were in Vegas, I would not bet a penny on it possibly <laughs> happening uh, no chance of that happening, but that's what has to happen, in my opinion, for them to get in the playoffs. They've got to go seven and one to have a shot at making the playoffs <laughs> and finish by uh, my accounts at that point. Seven and one would make them uh, ten, and, ten seven. and seven, and that might get them in the playoffs. So there you go. There's the glass half full for everybody who thinks. So I'm only just negative about Cleveland sports. I'll give you high grades for creativity, my friend. Thank you. Thank That's you. very that. creative the way you laid that out there. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the most impressive thing you said is you wouldn't uh, bet a penny of your money on <laughs> no. any of that happening. Wouldn't waste it. No. Yeah, uh -uh. right, right. So. I'll keep that penny for uh, another day. Uh, so, yeah, Reg, uh, this team teased us last uh, two weeks ago with the Bengals. Showed us maybe who they really are today, somewhere in between, probably. Yeah. And yeah. so, realistically, as I look at the remaining, uh, what is that, eight games, I could see them going maybe at best four and four, which would finish them at seven and 10, Michael. And I think that's more realistic, uh, you know, for this team. And that's, you know, if I'm uh, playing the schedule game now at the midway point almost, uh, I'll go. Uh, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt with Deshaun Watson, say four and four and seven and 10, but more than likely six and 11 is that final number I think they'll end up at. Again, can only go by what they show you. Yeah. And uh, again, they've shown us that they aren't s consistent at all. They don't know how to sustain positive performances, Kenny. And that's what that's what really stands out to me and kind of irks me, to be honest with you. You know, we say this all the time, and there are only 17 of these now. And when you have a positive win in the National Football League, yep. right, and you're a team who considers yourself a team that uh, should play, I'm, on, I'm just going to say play in January, and we know what that means well, then you've got to be able to show that you can sustain your positive performances. Do they do that? Do they do anything no. even remotely close to that? They not only don't do that, Ken, 
they come up with just terrible efforts like today, right? Sustained positivity. Hell, they go the opposite direction. They come off strong performances with terrible performances the next time they go out. I don't know how you can get behind that. It's hard to. Hey, Reg, you want some futures bets on the Browns for next year? They're already <laughs> out, my friend. You ready are for they? this? Yes, yeah, they I'm are. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Here, here we go. If you think this season's already over, and a lot of us do, right, you can start looking ahead to next year because Caesars Sportsbook released their futures bets for next season in the NFL. And if you want to bet on the Browns winning the AFC North, you get some pretty good odds, Reg. Plus 1,800. Bet 100, win 1,800 on the Browns winning the AFC North next year. That's a futures bet that's out to courtesy of Caesar Sportsbook. <laughs> uh, let's see here. If you want to bet on the Browns winning the AFC next year, the entire AFC, right? Representing uh, the AFC in the Super Bowl next year. How about these odds? Plus 5,000 right now on the Browns winning the AFC next year. So lay 100 uh, plus 5,000 you mm. can put in your pocketbook. So there's a couple of futures bets for you. If you're already uh, uh, you know, in the hole this year from betting on the Browns and you want to try and get back some of that cash next year, you want to feel good about it, that's what uh, Caesars thinks right now of the Browns to win the division, plus 1,800 to win the AFC next year, uh, plus 5,000, and that's with a Deshaun Watson at quarterback. So it doesn't change that much, to be honest with you. Hang on to your money. Yeah, that's Hang it. on to your money. Don't throw good money after bad. Go buy some Bitcoin with it. You're better off buying Bitcoin than you are betting you, on the you Browns. You might be. Yes, yeah, you might you be. Go. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You might that's be. not the one Tom Brady invested in. They went, they went bankrupt. You want to pick another Bitcoin company uh, as far as that goes. <laughs> right. Oh. All right, Reg. Final thoughts on this as we wrap up this R&R &R, uh, podcast brought to you by MGM Northfield Park. I guess you, yeah. I, I, I guess you want to feel uh, some sort of that. Well, if the Browns, I, I suppose, if they go on their current standard, Kenny, yeah, you would assume they'd go into Buffalo and play decently to well next week. week okay. Right? Yeah. You you would assume, and I mean, you would hope if they got any heart, they got any pulse, they got any care. They got any desire at all, you sh damn well should hope so, because if they come out uh, anything at all like they did today, then they're getting closer and closer to having uh, dramatic changes on this football team. So, um, yeah, I, I just uh, again, I I can't. I can't bring myself to believe or want to think that uh, they can they can beat the better teams in the league right now, Kenny. Not not with what they put out week after week. You well, you do know what you're going to get. They may give you a good one, and then they'll be an atrocity like they were today. Right. So you kind we kind of do know what they are, right? And again, you are who you what your record says you are, and that's three and six right now, and way on the outside looking in to playing any meaningful football uh, as the winter really hits in the new year. I'll get this quote correct from earlier in the podcast from Miles Garrett. So nobody yells at me on Twitter. Uh, Miles Garrett today, after the loss to the Miami Dolphins, said the following, doesn't matter if you're ready to run through a wall if it's in the wrong direction. So whatever the hell that means, that came from Miles Garrett today. Is that a shot at the Browns coaching staff? Yes, it, it, it is. It's a shot at the coaching staff. Yeah, yeah. So yes. let's let's see. You, you've had a team meeting already with the players and, and the coaches out of it, right? You had players calling each other out in in the locker room, yelling at each other after a game, and now you got this from your defensive leader who had, oh, by the way, two tackles and no sacks today yeah. for Miles Garrett, yeah, uh, yeah. your hundred million dollar man defensive end. So um, yeah, Reg. It, we'll see what happens next week, that, and I hope he's okay. I hope he's not hurt. But the only chance I think the Browns have of beating Buffalo next week is if Josh Allen does not play. If Josh mm -hmm. Allen plays, I don't think they stand a chance uh, because uh, yeah, that means he'll be healthy enough to play, and they've lost two in a row, and I can't see the Bills losing three in a row unless Josh Allen doesn't play next week. So uh, we'll, we'll break it down again next week after yeah. the Bills and the Browns go at it in Buffalo, all right?
Yeah, we'll keep watching and, uh, you oh. know, see if any of this Do we changes. Have to? <laughs> <laughs> it's what we signed up for, my man. Yeah, no, we, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It yeah. is. So how about have a if good we week. Just have- how about if we just have Cal and Cam watch the games and then they can, can tell us that. what happened? That'd be and, and fine. Then, yeah, that's yeah. good. Uh, that'd right. be fine. I'm, 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 I'm all right with that. Yeah. <laughs> Cal can watch down in Columbus there as he's enjoying uh, campus life at Ohio yes. State. And Cameron can uh, that. sit on a beach in Portugal somewhere and watch the game and then text me back what went down with it. There right? you go, man. It's yeah. uh, it's all good. <laughs> uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. No. <laughs> if, if that's the way we go. Right. Yeah, can't it can't be any worse than what's going on now is we're trying to break it down and it's just uh uh it's mind boggling how bad this team can uh look one week and how decent they can look the next. All right, Reg, we're gonna get out of here. Uh we'll talk again next week after that Browns Bills game. Always a pleasure, my friend. Have a great week, all right, pal. For sure, buddy. Uh, always good to uh get us together and uh chop it up and we'll do it again next week. Talk to you then. Sounds good. And thanks to all of our listeners out there checking out the Reg Iron Rota podcast here on the Press Play Podcast Network. We appreciate your loyalty and your listenership. 